Remember that. Hey, student. How are you, student? I missed you. Hey, I really appreciate you um, looking after him with all the school and everything. It's fine. That's not a problem. He loves me. Don't you, Scooter? Don't you? Yeah, you do. He loves everybody. Cute. He's getting big, too. Such an attention whore. Oh, he's all right. Gosh. So. I hope everything goes well in your 
You, you haven't heard anything, huh? About the disappearance? Yeah. yeah, hey, it's been 11 years, Sharon. Mm -hmm. So odds are that I probably won't. <laughs> At least not in my lifetime, right? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I, I shouldn't have brought this oh, no, in. No, no, no. Don't worry about it. It's okay. I mean, it is what it is. What can we do? Yeah. You are answered today, aren't you? Yeah. 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 Oh. <laughs> Amongst all this conversation, right? It's getting worse, isn't it? Really? Were you able to come up with that all by yourself? Do what? You push me away. Act like a jackass. I just, I'm here for you. Do I've you always been here look, for you. I look at me, Sharon. No, I stop. Mean. Look at me. All right? It's, it's, no, you cannot. There is nothing you can do for me. All right? So, look, I'm grateful for you coming to help out and taking Scooter. So, here. But I got to go. All right? So, just let me. I got to go. Thank you. Mr. Layton, my name is Latoya. I'm your nurse. I'm here to check on you. You just woke up from a very long sleep. I'm going to let the doctor know you're awake, okay? Follow me. Hello, Mr. Layton. Hey. I am Agent Jordan Smith with the FBI. This is Dr. Surratt. You're at the CDC in Atlanta. Dr. Surratt here is going hey. to explain um, you your medical FBI. condition. Outside of being written dehydrated, you are going to be okay. I want to run a few more tests if you don't mind, since we did find something unusual in your blood. Ben, may I call you Ben? Yeah. Can you tell me what you remember? 
I only have like fragments of my memory, you know, I'm, I'm just seeing pieces. It's like I'm staring at a puzzle, but big, huge pieces of it are missing. It's okay, just start from the beginning. Anything you can tell me will be okay. I remember boarding the flight. I remember faces, you know, here and there. Um, I remember the captain's voice. He was telling us, telling us to buckle our seatbelts. And I remember taking off, leaving Jacksonville. And after that, there was turbulence. And it just went black. Then what? I don't, I don't remember. I can't remember nothing after that. I'm just waking up here, talking to you. But I'm sure if you talk to some of the other passengers, you know, they could probably remember more than I can, you know? Ben, I'm not sh quite sure how to tell you this, but there were no other survivors. What do you mean nobody else survived? There were dozens of other people on the plane besides me. Why, why, why would no one else survive? Why am I still here? We're trying to find that out now. I haven't been taking any of my medications. None of my pills, none of my stuff. Maybe maybe Doc can write me a, a new prescription and then I can just start the chemo back. Chemo? For what exactly? For my cancer. You have no cancer in your body. Look, I don't know what the hell happened on that plane, but I know what's going on with me in my life, all right? I've been dealing with cancer for the last four years. I have stage four Hodgkin's disease. I have cancer. You found no cancer in your body. You're healthy as an ox. This is impossible. It's not possible, okay? Cancer just doesn't up and disappear. I was, I was dying, okay? I was going to die. Ben, do you know today's date? July 15th. What year? 2002. But why are you asking me this? What's the point? Ben, the flight you were on vanished July 15th, 2002. You've been missing for 12 years. You're the first piece of evidence we found. No, what is this? Is this even real? It is. No. No. What's going on, Agent Smith? You're an FBI agent. Tell me what's going on. Tell me what happened to me. I wish I could. I know this is a lot for you to take in. A lot has happened over the last 12 years, but... It's okay. You'll be fine. As soon as the doctor gives you the clear to go home, we'll offer you some assistance. You mean go home? Do I even still have a home? Well, temporarily, we will put you up in a hotel until you're able to get back on your feet. Here's a cell phone for you to keep in touch with us. Where are the buttons? Oh, I forgot. It's a touch screen. Touch screen. Like I said, a lot has changed over the years. I know this is a big shock for you, and it'll take some time, but you will adjust. Just take your time. Here's my card. If you remember anything, it doesn't matter how insignificant or small, give me a call, or if you just want to talk. Who's that on the TV, Agent Smith? Anissa Rogers, Channel 5 News. Ben, I don't typically believe in miracles, but Finding you, 
on becoming a believer. We'll be in touch. Investigators say they will question the victim once he's in a more stable condition. Now that's what I call a miracle. Thank you. So, is he lying? It's hard to tell at this point. He is confused, angry, scared. It's been 12 years since that flight vanished, and he's the only one that shows. He's got to know something. Of course he does, even if he doesn't realize it yet. I had Allison do a background check on Mr. Latham, and this isn't the first disappearance case he's connected to. What did she find? Well... On October 18, 1992, his parents went missing in the Key West after dropping him off at his grandparents' house. Were they found? No. Local police and FBI looked for weeks, but they never found them. But a few eyewitnesses did say that they saw them at a gas station and confirmed they were alone. But don't you think it's weird that his parents disappear and then years later so does he? I mean, that's just too much of a coincidence for me. But Ben came back. Ben did come back. Come on, let's go. I'm going to call Allison, have her fill in all that information related to the street team set up. And also, we need to get those photos. Hey, hello. Hey, I would like to uh, share my story with Miss Anissa Rogers. Yes, my name is Benjamin Latham. Yes, I am the guy from the plane crash. Okay. Well, I mean, well, I can be on my way to the studio right now. I'm on my way. Thank you. In Fulton County, two people are seriously injured after flames tore through their homes. Firefighters arrived on the scene and quickly put out the flames before they spread to nearby buildings. This is the third fire in two months in this particular subdivision. Investigators do suspect arson. We have Caitlin Skies joining us live from the scene. Caitlin? And clear. Yes. 
sandwich and what you like watching? Um, I don't know. I really don't want another sandwich, so we kind of did that all week. Okay. And that's no, you have a guest waiting in the lobby. We're out five minutes thirty. Okay. Yeah, so let's um, play some change. Yeah, we'll do that another time. <clears throat> Hello, Mr. Lathan? Yes. Hi, I'm Victoria Wilson. I'm the producer here at Channel 5 News. Okay, nice to meet you. Chief. Nice to meet you too. I've heard so much about you, but clearly not everything. Is uh, Nissa coming? Oh yeah, she'll be here in a couple of minutes. <clears throat> so, where have you been the last 12 years? Um. I just feel like I'll be more comfortable talking to Miss Rogers about that. Oh, I'm so sorry. My journalistic curiosity gets the best of me. But yeah, really, that though, so you... a lot around here. Hey, baby. What can I say? I'm good at my job, even before you got here. <laughs> right. Um, I'll take it from here. Mr. Lathan? Hey, my name is Ben. Um, you can just call me Ben. Okay. Um... You can call me Anissa. Listen, what happened to you was incredible. I've been dying to talk to you ever since your story broke. Not as much as I've been dying to talk to you. I will let the two of y'all get to it. Um, well, listen, how about we go somewhere where we can talk? Is that okay? okay? Right yeah. this way. You were on flight 0815 that vanished 12 years ago, right? Right. I mean, at least that's what I've been told. And you were found floating in the Atlantic Ocean by a cargo ship. Yeah, right. What happened to you? Honestly, Miss Rogers, I... I can't remember. Uh, okay, well tell me what you can remember. Not much. But I do remember you. I'm sorry, I don't understand. I know this is gonna sound crazy and <laughs> it's not gonna make any sense, but you were on a flight with me 12 years ago. I mean, we were on the same plane together. I remember you, I remember your face, you were there. And then something happened. I mean, obviously something bad happened. All right, but, um, Ben, I know you've been through a very traumatic experience, but I wasn't on that flight. No. You may be suffering from PTSD. No, I don't, I'm not suffering from PTSD or anything, whatever you're talking about. No, you were on the flight with me. I remember you. I remember your face. I even helped you with your baggage. All right, you look exactly the same. I mean, you changed your hair. That's the only thing that's different about you, but you were there. I remember you. I remember your voice. Ben, I'm 26 years old. When that flight took off, I was 14. I'm sorry, it just sounds like you're a little confused. Well, how did I recognize your voice then? I don't know, I mean... All right, you said I was the first face you saw when you woke up, right? On TV. Yeah. Okay, so maybe that's your mind connecting the dots and filling me into the blanks. Maybe perhaps you're right. Now I'm looking at you now. Yes, you are the lady that was on the plane with me. I mean, you literally have not aged at all. Well, now you look different. I mean, from your 
passport picture that was published, you you just look you look different. I mean, you looked a little sickly then. No offense, but I mean, you look good. You look good now, but just different. That's um, that's all I'm saying. I had stage four Hodgkin's disease when those pictures were taken. Wait, what do you mean you had stage four? So you don't have cancer anymore? No. At least that's what the doctors told me when I left the hospital. They said I'm cancer free. How is that possible? What do you mean? How is any of this possible? Look at me. You know, Ben, I think something else is going on here. Like what? All right, well, just hear me out, okay? Think about it. You're back from a flight that vanished over a decade ago with no explanation. Yeah. And you're cancer free? I smell a conspiracy. Now look, I want to I want to tell your story, okay? I mean, I want to help you. But I think we should meet at the cafe up the street tomorrow. Maybe 11? Is that okay? Whatever you want. You can do whatever you want. Excuse me. Anissa, one minute. Listen, here's my car, all right? I want you to call me if you need anything, okay? Anything. you take this the wrong way. I'm not that kind of girl, I promise. I'm not that kind of girl. Okay. But you is fine. Thanks. Uh, you can thank me later. Love on. Yeah, why not? Me too. On you. Yeah, you're done. Good night. Good night. Sean, you can't cut me off. I'm a grown ass woman. I'm about to call you a cat. Or should I call your husband? Blake? <laughs> Sorry about that, man. <laughs> that girl is crazy. She can get a bit aggressive after she had a couple of drinks. Who did you tell her? Mm. Stuff like this never happens, man. You know, most guys I serve this to, after three drinks down the ass, we gotta drag them out. That's your seventh, and you don't even look buzzed. Oh, yeah? Yeah. You sure about that? I guarantee you. You probably got this mixed up. It's probably the watered down stuff you serve your regulars, <laughs> man. I mean, you know how you do that shit. Nah, man. I'll tell you this. Either you got the stomach lining of a vulture, or you're not human, brother. I hear you. All right. Look, let me ask you something, man. I mean, you know, just hypothetically speaking. Say you were, um, you know, sick, you had an illness. I mean, like a fatal illness, you were dying. Mm -hmm. You know, some miraculous shit happened. I mean, some life changing shit. Almost like you got a second chance I mean, at life. Would you even second guess it? Do you believe in miracles? <laughs> I 
it's a walking miracle. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, dodge that bullet. But no, man, miracles? Nah, not really. Can't say that I do. Shit, I don't believe in the Easter Bunny or Santa Claus either, though. So, okay. Do you believe in God? Uh, I've been through so much shit, man, in my life. You know? It's kind of hard to say that. It's too much. But if God was real and I had a chance to meet him, I'd probably have to tell him to kiss my ass. That's funny. About a year ago, I felt the exact same way. Yeah. As you can tell, I'm not a religious man. I mean, I serve a mouthful of poison every night. <laughs> um, but uh, anyway, a few years back, uh, my daughter was a cheerleader or a color guard, or one of those God awful after school programs that I got to pay for annually. You know, my wife said I had to do it because I wanted to date them little hip hoppers. <laughs> anyway, so one night she's coming back from a competition from out of town. Uh, it's late. The car lost control. The bus swerved flipped. We got the call about the accident. Me and my wife jumped up, ran out the door. And the whole ride there, my wife is praying. She's just praying, oh God, oh God, please not my baby. And she started praying so hard, I started praying. We get there. The ambulance are there. The police are there. The bus just looks like a mangled ball. It's about a dozen body bags on the side of the I just knew one of them was my baby. I'm sorry. My wife lost it. I lost it. And then I heard that voice. Daddy, daddy, is that you? <laughs> Came from running from behind the bus, man. <laughs> oh man. Beautiful moment. I, I was I was overjoyed. I'm not saying that it was God. I'm not saying that the praying that we were doing was working. What I'm saying is that was a miracle. And then when you get a miracle, you don't question it. You take it. It's miracles. Get your hands off me. Come on. Let me go. You need to calm down, man. Come on, man. I'm serious. We don't. I don't want no problems with y'all, man. I'm serious. Y'all been drinking. Any movement yet? No, he's just sitting there. He keeps checking his watch, so I think he's waiting on somebody. Is this Caramel Macchiato? Yeah. This doesn't taste like Caramel Macchiato. Do I look like your wife? Just drink the damn coffee. Speaking of Lynn, have you decided what to take her for your anniversary yet? Yes, Jamaica. Oh, oh yeah. nice mom. Yeah, the kids will be going to stay with their parents and we'll be in Montego Bay for a week, mm. sipping coconut water through a straw, living it up. 
And then maybe we'll see if I'll have a last or harmony of baby brother or sister. <laughs> you know. Good. Well, she deserves that. Yeah, she does. How in the hell did he do it? An airplane full of people disappears. And this guy's the only one that returns. Now, you know I've worked some weird cold cases in my day. But this one right here, this tops my list. Look who it is. That's the same news reporter he was talking with yesterday. I bet she's on to something. Hey. Hey. Glad you agreed to meet me. It's not really like I have anything else going on, right? Yeah. Oh, that's right. You're from Jacksonville. Yeah. Yeah, why haven't you gone back home? Honestly, um, it's not really much for me to do in Jacksonville. I mean, the doctor's still here. They want to run a couple tests. Uh, still got to deal with the FBI. They got questions and shit to ask me. Almost kind of like you. Mm, not exactly like me. I mean, you did ask me for my help. And the difference is I actually do want to help you, so it's a little bit of a difference. But you think they don't want to help me? Oh, man. Honey, you're just a person of interest. If they can blame anybody on this disappearance, they will. Please understand, okay? I mean, my flight disappeared without a trace. I mean, there was no debris, no black box, no nothing. Yeah, um, Ben, I got that. What's the point? Point. Once you eliminate the impossible, whatever remains, no matter how improbable, must be the truth. So what's the truth? You really want to know? I think my plane was abducted. Abducted by who? Oh. Oh wow. Oh, you mean you mean like abducted, abducted? Like, wait, wait. You mean like abducted by like little green aliens abducted? Like okay. little green men with laser beams? You making fun of me? Sorry, you laughing at me? I just don't understand why you're ignoring the most logical and obvious explanation. You mean logical? All right. <laughs> this is so funny. Then explain it. You explain it to me. Then. Think about it. Who do you think would actually profit the most from you being cured of cancer? You're ignoring the most obvious, simple explanation. Still nothing? Did you ever consider our government? I mean, this could be some type of classified off the books project. Yeah. Wipe your memory clean and, and, and you're good to go. No, I thought about all that. I've considered it all, okay? Think, that's all I've had time to do is think. But look at me. I haven't aged in 12 years. Matter of fact, I even look younger than I did before. The government is capable of a lot, I know that. But even this, me, what I got going on has to even be beyond them. And then it's again, the nightmares. You know what I mean? I've been sleeping, I've been going crazy. I'm starting to think that the nightmares is really what happened. I'm getting my memory back through the nightmares. And then there's you. Again, why I know for a fact that you on that plane. Oh my gosh, are we here again? I swear we 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 went through this before. Okay, I wasn't on that plane. There's no way I could have been on that plane. This is you right here, right? Is it, isn't this you? Have you shown this to anybody else? Should I show it to anyone else? She looks a lot like me, but. Think about it, who's really gonna believe your story? 
You sound crazy. No, it's a story. Yeah, it's a story now. No, I'm insane. Yeah, you've been in, you've been abducted so by you aliens. Admit it. You still want somebody admit it. was on this I'm plane up twelve here years. You proof, and you still want to admit that you were there? Why don't you tell me what happened? What did you do to me? Where you going? Did you see that? I did. What just happened? I don't know, but we need to find out. Let's roll. Miss Rogers, it is Miss Anissa Rogers, correct? Yes. Born in Atlanta? Yes. You like the South? What's not to like? And you work for Channel 5 Eyewitness News? Yes. For how long? I don't know, maybe two years. Listen, what is this about? Can we just get to the point? What do you? What am I actually here for? What do you want to ask me? Well, Miss Rogers, you have been in contact with Mr. Lathan for the past two days. Yeah, so? If he has shared any information regarding the missing flight, you need to tell us immediately. I need to tell you? Yeah, see, I don't think I need to tell you anything because I'm sure you already know as a journalist, I can't be compelled to divulge information from a source. Correction. You can't be compelled to reveal information from an anonymous source. See, you're smarter than that. But Ben Lathan is obviously not an anonymous source. He is the prime suspect in this investigation. So Ben is a suspect. If you know anything, you should tell us now. There are families that want to know what happened to their loved ones. Don't you want to help them get closure? I would love to help them get closure. I would like that more than anything, Agent Stark. Smith. Smith, sorry. Um, the problem is Ben hasn't given me any information that can help you. Ben hasn't given you any information, huh? You know, Miss Rogers, I find that hard to believe. A big town reporter like yourself will sit in a cafe for 30 minutes with the guy that's disappeared for 12 years and not get a story. Well, let me explain. 30 minutes isn't a lot of time, mm -hmm. but it is enough time to, I don't know, order a cup of coffee or something. <clears throat> Why would he be so interested in talking to you? That's a great question. He has been fixated on you 
from the moment he woke up in that hospital. Why is that? Your guess is as good as mine. But what I am curious about is this sudden cure of cancer, which I'm sure you have some information about. You care to explain? That's classified. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Well, listen, this has been fun, and I don't suppose I have any more information that can help you. So if that's all you have, I'll be on my way. Thank you for coming in, Miss Rogers. Pleasure. If Ben does tell you something that could help with this investigation, you'll do the right thing and let us know. You got it. Yeah, we'll be in touch. She knows something. It's in her behavior. She's been evasive, but we don't have enough to hold her. Well, whatever it is, she isn't talking. Now, according to his phone records, the first phone call he made was to Channel 5 News. And the next thing you know, we see them together. Fact. Your spidey senses are on to something. Talk to me. We need to dig a little deeper into Miss Rogers' history. We have to see if she has any connection to that missing flight. Yeah. Well, day night with the wife is off again. It's territory. I'm on. Mm. Mm. Second. All right. Hey. Hey. Look, I just want to say I'm sorry. Right? Sorry about what? For everything. I just feel like this is all my fault. You know, you were right about the FBI and all, and, and then they came and took you. This, I mean, this, no, wait. This nothing. isn't your fault, and it's nothing that I couldn't handle. Hmm. But it does confirm what I've been saying. What? They're keeping tabs on you. They're probably hoping that you can lead them to whatever it is they think you know. That's the point. I don't know nothing. I mean, I still shouldn't have, you know, accused you of anything. That's all right. I mean, I understand. You've been through a lot. You're just trying to make sense of everything. How's your memory? I still don't remember nothing. Just keep having the same crazy ass dreams. 
Well, how do you feel physically? That's the point. Honestly, I feel the, the best I've ever felt in my life. Well, that's good, right? Oh, it's crazy. You gotta understand, I'm, I've been sick for so long, man. Like I forgot what feeling healthy even, even feels like. Well, you know what? Maybe I can help remind you of what life could be. Mm -hmm. I want to show you something. Where are you taking me? Just enjoy the ride. These are all the surveillance photos that we obtained so far. Do we have any significant leads via the phone conversations? There's been no pertinent information in the last 30 days. Right. So where are we with Ms. Rogers? Well, you won't believe what I found. At this point, I'm willing to believe almost anything. I was looking for any connection Anissa Rogers may have to Ben or anybody else that might have been on that flight. And we found none. Another dead end. She is not just a reporter. The way she deflected questions, she was way too calm and in control. That's what I thought, too. But then we kept digging. Follow me. Let me show you what we did find. Hey, Banks. Finish downloading those files. All right. Thanks. I had Allison pull the flight manifest, and I found this. When I pulled it up, this is what I saw. So I immediately ran the facial recognition program. And what do you know? It confirmed it as her. Doesn't that look like somebody we know? That's one hell of a coincidence. And here's another coincidence. As we dug deeper into Anissa's background, maybe to find some type of family connection, guess what else we didn't find? What? Wait for it. Anissa Rogers has no history before 2010. No birth certificate, no school records, nothing. It's almost like she didn't exist. Isn't that weird? Now, why in the hell would a TV anchor have a false identity? I do not know, but I know there's something quite unusual about her. It's like when I was behind the mirror, it felt like she knew I was there. And if I didn't know any better, I'd say she was staring right at me. Where are they now? Hang on a sec. The GPS in his phone places him at her house about 30 minutes ago. I think it's about time we get some real answers out of her. Thanks, Allison. Have a seat right there. 
So you invite all your news leads to your house? Actually, we're here because we're not sure who may be listening to our conversation in your room. And you are special. Now that you mention it, um, that does make sense. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I mean, thank you for all of this. You know, thanks for the invite. It's been a long time since I've been able to enjoy a woman. And I didn't mean like that. I mean, you know, enjoy anybody socially. <clears throat> so what, you don't have any friends or family? No, my, uh, my parents died a long time ago when I was a kid, you know that. And when it happened, there wasn't any evidence. It's like they just up and disappeared. I'm sorry. No, no, it's all good. I mean, that was a long time ago when I was a kid. Uh, my grandparents raised me after that, and, you know, they died not too long ago. So, do you not go out, or...? My social life was pretty non-existent, you know, after I got diagnosed with the cancer, but... I didn't really have any close friends before that. I was kind of a dick to everybody that was around me, so... So, nearly dying didn't improve your people skills? <laughs> Sounds that bad, huh? Mm -hmm. I mean, I do have a dog, though. It, that counts for anything. Do you have a dog? Yeah, it's a schnauzer. It's a puppy. You have a schnauzer? Yeah, we were right. we were pretty close. <laughs> you don't look like much of a schnauzer guy. I'm not really helping my case at all. <laughs> no. <Emma. laughs> but if it's any consolation, you haven't been much of a jerk to me. You expect me? Not at all. You just stay right there, okay? Give me a second. Seriously? And you can't call first? Where has Ben? Why? Miss Rogers or whoever you are, you are under arrest. Wait, what do you mean? Under arrest? Look, you're under arrest. Oh, well, I have time for an explanation. Agent so, Maxwell, oh, apprehend her. No, no, it's okay. Wait, Mr. Yeah. Latham, <laughs> calm down. <laughs> Mr. Latham!
I'll have the updates ready for you. Thank you. Agent Fisher? I see you are just as pleasant as ever, Max. Did it hurt your feelings? Hmm? I'm sorry. Thought I had a job to do. My bad. You just go ahead and let me know when you'd like to get started. The assailant is a local reporter, mm -hmm. Anissa Rogers. About two hours ago, me and my partner, Agent Moreau, attempted to bring Ms. Rogers in on identity fraud. She was with Benjamin Lathan, our leading suspect in the disappearance of Flight 0813. Yeah, I read his file. Story sounds like crap. Tell me, are they working together? Nothing that we can confirm at this time. Hmm. She was getting a story. Upon taking her in, she broke free and attacked us. I was down. My partner was killed at the scene. Yeah, I read, um... This is it, your initial report on the way over. And what's described in that report sounds like something out of a comic book. I mean, the suspect didn't have a gun. How did Agent Monroe get shot? I believe the suspect was wearing some type of body armor, maybe even using some unknown technology. Hmm. Shots were fired and a bullet ricocheted. So you mean to tell me that a 90-pound news report took you down, killed Agent Monroe with no gun? Well, either she's Jesse Bourne's little sister, or you and your former partner, really incompetent. Look, I just told you what happened. She is not who she appears to be, and she is extremely dangerous. Now... We've set up checkpoints at the airport and every train and bus station in the city. Mm -hmm. But I don't think she's going anywhere without him. Why is she so interested in him? I don't know. But if we use him as bait, I think he'll draw her out. Okay. And when he does, I need you and your team to take her down. Mm, you ain't got to worry about that. How are we tracking him? We have a GPS tracker on his phone. Mm -hmm. We've been tracking him for about three days now. Nice. We're nice. going to cut him loose. Nice. Now that sounds like a plan. Fine. Oh, and Agent Smith. I don't have any room on this team for incompetency. So when we're out there on the field, do me one small favor. Stay the hell out my way. Asshole. Just go stay at me. This drawing was in your pocket. What is it? It's just a draw. The detail you use suggests that you drew it for a reason. What is it? I like to draw. My partner is dead. I'm sorry to hear that. We both saw what she did. I didn't see anything. Remember, I was getting knocked unconscious, remember? After that, everything went fuzzy, so I don't remember much. We found this in your hotel room. You circled her picture, Natasha Bow. 
Who is she? I don't know who she is. Um, Agent Smith, that is your name, right? Why don't you tell me who she is? You circled her picture because she looks exactly like Anissa Rogers. She killed my partner. He had a wife and two kids and she killed him. We both saw what she did, her strength. She waved her hands and knocked me across the room, then deflected bullets before they could even touch her. What the hell is she? I don't know who she is. I don't know what she is, okay? Look, I'm sorry that your partner died. I'm truly sorry that he lost his life. But I don't know what's going on. Ever since I've been back here, my life has been a living hell. So if you know what's going on, maybe you can help me, Agent Smith. I don't know what her connection is to this flight, but I will find out. And when I do, if you're in bed with her, I promise I'll make you wish you were still missing. Are you okay? <laughs> I'm sorry. Can you forgive me? It's okay. Can I get you something? Um, just a coffee. Just a okay. I'll be right with you. Thank you. Ben. Are you in my head? Ben. Subject has just made contact with the target. Send him an asset. Copy that. Send an asset. So you're not afraid of me? No. Good. I feel like if you wanted to hurt me, you would have already done it by her. Alright. Well, I'm sure you have a lot of questions. What happened? Your flight was taken. You say taken? Taken by who? Do you mean aliens? You know, I guess that term would accurately describe us. So you're telling me you're not human? No. 
All right, so why was I the only one that was returned? What happened to all those other people? It would be easier if I just show you. Show me. Our species are called Asians. And we come from a world called Ozone. My name is Zoe. I was on that flight to make sure you were in position for extraction when you reached New York. Your father was Azion. Because you share his alien physiology, prolonged exposure to Earth's radiation caused you to develop cancer. While you were on the plane, you were expelling radiation to everyone. Our only option was to take the plane to ensure everyone's survival. Our species share a lot of similarities. So much so, your father was able to mate with a human. And you were born half human and half Asian. Once we helped you adapt to your Azion physiology, it cured your cancer and allowed you to access your natural abilities. As a scientist, on my world, it was my responsibility to look after I was curious. You were the first of your kind, and I was curious to know what you would be like in your natural life, and if you were like your father. I must admit, my thoughts of you had grown from scientific to personal. Are you all right? Yeah. I mean, why wouldn't I be, right? Well, you just found out your father was an alien, and you're half alien, and you seem to be taking it pretty well. A little concerned. I'm fine. But trust me, I'm definitely freaking out on the inside, but I'll be all right. Listen, there's an extraction point I need to get to in the city, and we have to go. Okay. We have to go now. What's wrong?
You ain't bad. Are you? I can't tell you just yet, but I'm not your enemy. We have to go. Hey, look, I was just thinking, man. You're the only person that I got out here. And now you're leaving me, too. Look, I'm sorry, all right? I don't have a choice. I have to go, and you know that. You're gonna be fine. No, I won't. I'm the one they want, not you. But I want to come with you. I want to be with you. I want to see my parents.
Hey! So, this is your official report, Agent Fisher. Yes, ma'am. We engaged the targets. They displayed extraordinary ability, which we believe to be alien in origin. And Benjamin Lathan also demonstrated uh, superhuman abilities. Yes, ma'am. It's all there in my report. And you can corroborate these accounts, Agent Smith. Director Karnesky, I stand by everything in my original report. Do you believe them to be hostile? Actually, I think we were the hostile ones. What? Excuse me. You saw what they did. They killed your partner. They attacked us. They're dangerous. Look, what we need to do is regroup, okay? We need a better plan. These things need to be tamed. We need to get back out there. Listen, if we had not attacked her first, it wouldn't have happened. Our team hunted her. She could have easily killed all of us, but she didn't. Instead, they left. That's the dumbest thing that I've ever heard you say. Man. Does your head hurt? Okay. This case is now classified and considered closed. The details are not to be discussed with anyone. Agent Fisher, you're dismissed. But you're going to need you know this isn't done, and you know they'll be back. You'll call me. This investigation is now a matter of national security. This cannot get out to the general public. Your clearance level has officially been raised. You will continue to investigate and report directly to me. Yes, ma'am. Agent Smith. Do you think you'll be back? I think sooner or later. 
they will return. <laughs>